and welcome back. Well actually I'm in the final throws of working on the UVW bump map. Um, let's just have a look at the UV map first. We'll hide the bump section here. As you can see I've sorted out so that we've got the top section of the wing and the bottom section of the wing and relevant sections are laid out in and around their respective areas. Now I've not lined this up vertically as I did with the fuselage because it's not really necessary. I worked from our orthographic views reference material and got that set up. Now up in this section here we can see the radiator coolants. There's two of them, one there, one there and let me just press control alt my roller mouse key let's zoom in a little bit now here it's sorted out and like a cardboard cutout it's all stitched together in relevant places and if it can't be stitched together then we leave a gap that section there is the grill for the front part so that fits in there and this is the grill for the rear part which can be seen in this section here we've got two of those one on either side port starboard left right and over here what we have is a jumble of pieces of geometry now most of it actually relates to the nuts and bolts that we created so leave it out as, as it is and the rest of the geometry well that's geometry which is hidden it's not going to be seen so what we can do is actually when it comes to creating a diffuse map is block that area in and color it gray it's as simple as okay well I've got my white layer again so let's unhide this and pull down a little bit well here we are as you can see it's straightforward nothing difficult about this at all all I'm doing is follow the pattern which is on the orthographic reference material and putting in the lines putting in the circles as and where they need to be oh, these sections here they're the machine guns one machine gun there and one machine gun there now something I didn't mention in the last tutorial was what if you make a mistake with some of this? Hey, it's not a problem. All you really do is for your layer 1 push that up to 100% and as we can see there now we've got a brush I've got this set at 44 and we're on the white background so we want a white paint let's just color that in and there we go you make a mistake it's as simple as that to remove it. Well I don't want those removing so I'm going to go edit, step back and now we've got it. So all I need to do now is hide this then go file save as now I've got wing copy I want this as a JPEG file let's go JPEG and I'm going to call this wing UVW B for bump because I've already got one and press enter and say OK right well now that that's done I'll catch you in 3ds Max hi there again ok so I created um, a new swatch called it wing UVW map and introduced it into the bump section and there we can see it and I've applied um, an amount of 15 only so that you can really see what it is that we've done as far as the wing is concerned well, let's have a quick look underneath so yeah that looks as though we've done quite a bit of work as far as modeling is concerned and really we haven't okay well I think you should be fine with doing bump maps now um, as far as the ailerons are concerned maybe they could be something in there that we'll touch on a little bit later on but I want to start making 
inroads as far as colouring our diffuse map is concerned. Well, I've actually made a start, and if I pop over into the fuselage section and I switch on our diffuse map, there we go. As you can see, I've made a start. Now, I'm, we're going to be popping back into uh, Photoshop in a short while so that we can see precisely how all this is done. Let me just do a quick render. There we go. Now, this is by no means finished. It looks too pristine. It really doesn't look as though it's um, been in any kind of a fight whatsoever. It's what I would call museum pristine. Right, well this one is actually based on um, these here. Right, I'm actually doing the top one there and of course if we have a look it shows you the top version as well. Um, as far as insignia and that's concerned there's other ones down here and there we go so gives you an idea you know what website I obtained these from if not go back a couple of tutorials and you'll find them okay so we'll close these down and I'll see you back in Photoshop okay well here we are again now as you can see I've got several layers created well four for the moment I've got the background which is the UVW map I've got this layer 1 which is actually this paint layer here um, layer 4 which is hidden at the moment in fact let me just have a look at this one and as you can see this is the original bump map that we created and layer 5 which is the insignia now when it comes to layer 1 uh, by the way this bump map layer I'm just hiding layer 1 we go into the opacity and actually turn that down and as we can see now we've got our UVW map underneath now that painting looks a bit rough it certainly isn't within the edges around here and it doesn't need to be and the reason for that is quite simple if we just hide layer 1 for a moment I'll explain here we have green lines all the way around the outer edges of our geometry now this is a boundary anything outside of that green line doesn't appear within our model or within the UVW map anything within does so we can be as rough as we want with our paint around these edges this is why I was saying earlier on about actually blocking things in now if we bring our layer 1 back and we take the opacity up to 100 percent there are sections around here which are painted black if we just reduce the opacity once again now there's this section here which is blocked out and painted completely black and that's the recess for this section where our exhaust reside let me switch off the background for a moment and go up to layer 1 and turn the opacity up full there we go that's no more than a black swatch and the same is true for this section it's all green or an olive green a gray green so what's under there well let's have a look background back on let's take our layer one take the opacity down and there we can see well that's all the elements for our cockpit area in fact I need to change this because the color is a little bit too light it needs to be the same color as this down here so if I turn the opacity back up let's go to 100% I'm now going to go for my eyedropper click on that section there come back 
reduce my opacity there we go make sure that we are on layer 1 grab a brush it's about 24 now make sure I've got that darkish green and let's colour it in in fact we'll make that brush size a little bit bigger something like that it is this simple we don't have to uh, spend too much time on this unless we wanted to do quite a bit more detailed work just going to increase that a little bit okay so you get the idea just popping around making sure it's covered now what I generally do is when I'm working with this and with 3ds max I keep 3ds max open okay let's just color that lot in there that's got that turn the opacity up 100 percent I'm going to close the background down there in fact I've got the wrong green but not to worry we'll use this as an example so close the background now I'm going to go layers flatten image say OK file and save now I'm going to pop back up uh, to edit say step backwards so it brings all my layers back now pop into 3ds max let's do a render and there you can see it has changed the cockpit section if I go in a little bit let's have another look and there we are so I know I've got to change it back to make it that color well mindful of the time we'll call that it for this session and I'll catch you later